Good morning. I would like to welcome all of you to worship today, those of you who are here in person and those of you watching online. Welcome everyone. I'm Pastor Maggie Westaby and I'm so grateful to be worshiping with all of you today. An announcement before we begin. It is with deep sorrow and hope in the resurrection that I share the passing of our brother, Dale Smith, Carol Smith's husband and Tammy Smith's father. Dale's service will be for family only, but we will continue to hold Dale's family in our prayers later in this service. Seeing as we are having our annual meeting after worship today, I changed up our service a little bit to encompass a liturgy that is grounded in baptism and in who all of you are as members of St. John. And so now I invite you all to settle in to allow yourself a chance to breathe and to center yourself with our Creator and with one another by hearing these words from our mission statement. We are called to serve God, serve each other, serve the community, and serve the wider church. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. United to Christ in the waters of baptism, saturated in the Spirit's energy, immersed in God's grace and forgiveness, let us give thanks. Creator God, we give thanks for your living water, water brought to life by the Holy Spirit who in the beginning hovered over the face of the deep. We give thanks for the parting of the Red Sea, freeing your people, allowing them to embark on a journey where their thirst was quenched from a rock in the wild. We give thanks for the River Jordan, welcoming your people into the promised land, flowing with milk and honey. And again for the River Jordan, where Christ was baptized and where you, holy God triune, were revealed to all creation. We give thanks for your creation, for our planet Earth, connected together in intricate ways and through the water cycle. We give thanks for every molecule of water, creating water vapor, alluring clouds, vast oceans, and deep blue glaciers. We give thanks for the water that fills our bodies, May it remind us of our connection together, of our connection to you, and our connection to all creation. May we flow like water, being present with one another today. May we observe space like water, holding space for one another. And may we go deep like water, allowing the spirit to hover within. Amen. Please stand as you are able. I invite you to sing our opening hymn, Borning Cry, number 732.
please be seated. Our reading is from Deuteronomy 30, 15 through 20. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you do not hear, but are led astray, to bow down to other gods and serve them. I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today, and I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able to welcome the gospel. Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us, speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and children can come forward. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Good? Awesome. So, if you were paying attention at the beginning of the service, I read what our mission statement is. Does anybody remember what it was? Or does anybody know what our mission statement is? It's okay if you don't. It's a kind of a long one. So it says we're called to serve God, serve each other, serve the community, and to serve the wider church. Does that seem like a big job to do? Yeah, I think so. That's a big job to do, but I think you guys can do it. Because this year, do you know what your theme is? Do you remember your theme for Sunday school? Who is your superhero? No one? Me? No, not me. <laughs> Miss, Kim. Miss Kim? Yes, Miss Kim is a superhero. But not quite. Yes, God is your superhero. And today we are going to hear in my sermon a really cool scripture about God who lived in Jesus. And I have this plant here to kind of demonstrate it. So in the Bible, before we get to the commandment that we just heard, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. So you get to be all these cool little branches that are sprouting off. Whoever lives in me and I and them will bear much fruit. So what does that say? Who do you get your strength from? 
Yes, from Jesus. So that makes our mission statement not as hard to live out then, right? When we can turn to God and when we can turn to Jesus and we have people like Miss Kim and all of your Sunday school teachers to go through the Bible with you. And some of you today are getting a special something. Does anyone know? I see some faces who are going to be getting them. Yes? Yes, yes. We're, some of you are going to get a Bible. Some of you already have your Bibles, and then other ones of you will get them when you're in third grade. So that's pretty cool, huh? Should we give thanks about this? All right, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Teach us to live in you so we can love your creation. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good job. You can head back to your seats. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my strength and my joy. Amen. About a year ago, in fact, it was on Valentine's Day, 2022, when I received a phone call from the Synod office with the joyful news that they had discerned a church that they thought would be a good fit for my first call. It was joyful news. Is that Hunter? <laughs> I was told it was St. John Lutheran Church in the village of Maine. Being a Wassa native and growing up in the ELCA, I was shocked to realize that I had never heard of nor been to St. John. Immediately, I tried to find out as much information as I could. I poured over your ministry site profile. I did a deep dive into your website, and I asked around about St. John. I was fascinated right off the bat when I read through your history, the details of your ministry, and when I discovered your excellent children and youth programs. I also loved this line on your website. St. John is a community of faith centered in the words from Jesus, from John chapter 15, Verse 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Which is why I decided to change things up today and why I chose this passage as our gospel reading. Not because it's Valentine's weekend, but to highlight St. John's mission, to remind us why we come together in worship, and specifically for later as we gather together for our annual meeting. When we will look over the past year, where we embraced life together, life's ups and downs, life's joys and celebrations, and life's sorrows. And where we will look ahead to this coming year. A time when we will be presented with opportunity after opportunity to show what it looks like when we love one another. And in my time here, I have seen that in action, and I have experienced your love. I know I could go on and on and on about all of the love I have experienced, but to honor everyone's time, I would like to highlight the parts of your lives that are also lived out outside the church because so much of what you all do between Sundays involves a whole other mosaic of life. The good, the not so good, and everything in between. Which is why our gospel reading is so important to really dive into. And to do that, I would like to start by highlighting the verses that lead up to this commandment, where we hear Jesus say, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them will bear much fruit. 
beautifully illustrating our dependency on Jesus, encouraging us to abide with God by being in relationship with God. As it is only when we abide with God that we can actually fulfill the commandment to love one another like Jesus did. Great in theory, but hard to live out. Especially when there are broken relationships, which can cause deep wounds, making the idea of love seem ludicrous sometimes. Which to me, on some level, does make sense. Because if a relationship is unhealthy, it is important to give yourself some space and some grace as not all relationships need to be mended quickly. Instead, what we are to do at all times, in the good and in the bad, is to turn to God, to spend time abiding with God. After all, it is only God who can love everyone, which Jesus knew intimately. And so he provides us with this image of a vine and branches. As branches take time to grow, they take time to produce fruit, and they need proper nourishment, which can only be provided by God. And so God gives us a special kind of nourishment to grab onto, the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. A specific time in our history where Christ's life was documented so that we could experience Christ today. As scripture allows us to discover God's love is deeper than words. It is the living word. And we will celebrate God's living word later in this service with the giving of Bibles an experience of love and joy for those receiving their Bibles and for the entire congregation. Because God's love is not some abstract concept. God's love is deeply grounded in God's decision to dwell as Jesus in the world. Which in turn, Christ calls us to do. To love one another. But the only way we can really do that is by abiding in him so that we can become the fruiting branches producing love and joy in the world. As a professor of mine, Caroline Lewis said, joy may very well be a feeling of grace, the emotion of grace, even the response to grace. Joy is that indescribable sense when you find yourself experiencing abundant grace. Now I must add, this isn't the kind of joy you find when your team wins the Super Bowl. Or maybe it's, that's just specific to this year, since the Packers aren't in the Super Bowl. But in all seriousness, I would like each one of you to think of a time when you have experienced God's grace filled joy. For me, I experience God's grace filled joy every time that the children sing for us. When I shake your hands after church and when I can join you in fellowship. Joy, of course, that we also experience outside this building through the act of loving our neighbors, which brings about our mission statement that I shared at the beginning of the service, that we are called to serve God, serve each other, serve the community, and serve the wider church. And the only way we can do that is by grounding ourselves in Christ to abide in God's presence and to be nourished by God's word. To remember why why we are here together in the first place. To share God's love and joy and to do so both inside 
and outside of these walls. Amen. We continue worship by singing our hymn of the day, Here I Am, Lord, number 574. I now invite Ray Gallenberg, Maya Grudzinski, Ben Grunenberg, Sophie Hoffman, Macy Landwer, Tyler Melke, Aliyah Astrike, Cameron Shave, Violet West Teske, and Vinka Westaby. Sorry, that was a tongue twister. Violet Teske and Vinka Westaby <laughs> to come forward.
All right, I have a blessing for all of you. May you find joy, comfort, wonder, and God's love in these pages. May you discover our roots and the unique history of our faith. May you experience God's word in your soul. May you relish the Old Testament with stories over 10,000 years old when stories were shared only by word of mouth, passed on from generation to generation, to provide people with hope, laughter, and love, so that each person could experience God's faithfulness and desire for relationship. May you ponder the New Testament. May you find Jesus and find awe. May your relationship with God be deepened. May God's word be like rich and nourishing soil, sprouting joy and kindness abundantly around you. And may you grow in God's word, finding truth, guidance, and peace. In the name of the Holy Trinity, one God. Amen. Let us pray. Awesome God, we give thanks for these young minds. May you cultivate curiosity in their faith and joy in their hearts. May each of them know that they are called by name to grow in life and to grow in faith. Bless them, guide them, and keep them safe. May your word be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And for the congregation, let us all show our appreciation for these young minds with an applause. Please stand as you are able. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need, responding to God of grace with hear our prayer. God of wonder, we give thanks for diversity in life, for unity that happens through mutual respect, being open, and caring for one another. Help us to be curious and to go deep together. God of grace, Creator God, we give thanks for the life-giving ways of your creation, and we cry out in sadness and grief when natural disasters take place and claim lives. We pray for those impacted by the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, for all who lost loved ones, homes, livelihoods, and for those who are still missing. Help restoration and relief efforts. Provide supplies, support, and medical care. God of grace, Mothering God, you call us to abide in you, to allow your love to fill our actions so that we can share your grace-filled joy and love with all whom we meet. We ask that you continue to inspire us to do this each and every day. God of grace, yeah. eternal God, we lift up Carol and her family and all who are mourning the loss of Dale. Provide your comfort and peace. May all find hope knowing that Dale is with you now and that you are holding her in your loving embrace. For nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. God of grace. Yeah. Healing God, provide relief and healing to all who are experiencing illness and deepen our care and concern for one another. Today we especially pray for Nancy Volker, Sheldon Voigt, Pat Paisky, Pat Plunkett, Thea Heil, and Carol Fitzke. May your healing spirit reach them all where it is needed and bring them into fullness of life you desire for each of them. God of grace, nurturing God, abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for all the members of St. John. May each of them find peace, joy, and comfort in the week ahead. We also lift up this week's prayer ministry, Chase Bialki. Drew Dietert, Andy Webb, Louis Reisman, Roger Knight, J. 
Jason Miller, Mariah Marcourt, Steve Boehm, Tim Conhorst, Justin Grunenberg, Joseph Gerbein, and Kristen Glaze. God of grace, pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of you, our God and our creator. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you all to share the peace however you feel comfortable. Let us continue with our offering. Good and gracious God, we give thanks for the generosity of those who are able to give. Bless these gifts in our ministry. May our offerings become a light, unveiling your love throughout the world. Amen. Before we begin communion, does anybody want a prepackaged communion? If so, please raise your hand and an usher can bring it around to you. Then please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, 
and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray how Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. For those of you wanting to take prepackaged, I invite you to open the bread and to hear these words. Take and eat. This is my body given for you. I now invite you to open the juice and to hear these words. Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you. For those of you wanting to partake in continuous communion, the ushers will usher everyone into two lines today. So those on this side will receive bread from here and the wine, and these on this side will receive the bread and wine, and you can head back to your seats. There are gluten-free wafers available upon request. This is a time for you to receive the gift of Christ, to take what you are and to become what you receive. I now invite our communion systems to come forward to help with the meal and for all to come, for everything is now ready.
Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. May Christ's body continue to fill us with your grace and love, nourishing our bodies and lives so that we can boldly share your love with the world. Amen. For announcements, for a full list, please do consult your bulletin. Here are some things that I would like to highlight. There are still some Lenten service slots open to help. If you are able, please sign up. And thank you to everyone who has already signed up. The sign up is now open for our next photo directory. And there's a bunch of information available to you out in the narthex. And if you have any questions, you can direct them to Jan Miller. All of her information is in your bulletin. Also in your bulletin is a sign up sheet for Lily's. And all orders and excuse me, all orders and payment are needed by March 5th. The Cemetery Association meeting has been rescheduled to Sunday, February 26th, after worship. And if you are all able, please do join us for our annual meeting in our fellowship hall. Are there any other announcements? Then please stand as you are able to receive the blessing. May the Spirit of God breathe peace in your very being. May the Spirit of God bring you wisdom and understanding. May the Spirit of God bring you courage and joy, so that the brilliance of God can shine through your eyes, so that the love of Christ can radiate through your hands. In the name of the Holy Trinity, one God, amen. Let us sing our sending song, God Be With You, till we meet again, number 536.